The risk of RH alloy immunization is the development of fetal anemia. There are several ways that we can identify this during pregnancy. The most serious is characteristic fetal heart rate changes. The characteristic feature is a sinusoidal pattern, and babies that develop this typically have a hemoglobin that's less than 3. They're critically ill, and a sinusoidal tracing warrants immediate intervention. Fortunately, it's very rare. The second modality we have for identifying fetal anemia is ultrasound. A hydropic baby develops characteristic changes that we call hydrops. By definition, hydrops is the accumulation of fluid in two separate compartments. These can include skin edema, plural or, plural or pericardial effusion, ascites, and polyhydramnios. There's other evidence in the amniotic fluid of hemolytic anemia, and that's the presence of delta OD450. In the setting of hemolysis, red blood cell degradation products migrate into the amniotic fluid and change it a yellow color. You can plot this color on a normal curve by gestational age and identify the risk for anemia in the fetus. Of course, the risk you run with instrumenting a woman at risk for RH alloy immunization is that you could induce a greater antibody response by sticking a needle through her placenta. So a non-invasive uh, approach is preferred. And the method we have for doing that is measuring the peak systolic velocity of the middle cerebral artery. To measure the MCA, a circle of Willis is identified on ultrasound, and the Doppler gate is used to interrogate the anterior middle cerebral artery right where it takes off from the circle of Willis. There are normal curves by gestational age. The theory behind measuring the middle cerebral artery peak systolic velocity has to do with the viscosity of the fetal blood. And fetal blood that has a normal hematocrit moves at a particular speed that's predicted based on the gestational age of the infant or the baby, the fetus. If there is fetal anemia present, then the blood becomes less viscous and therefore moves more quickly during systole compared to blood that has a normal hematocrit. Therefore, if the peak systolic velocity is abnormally high, more than two standard deviations above normal, that correlates with a critical level of fetal anemia and investigation with intrauterine uh, intravascular fetal transfusion or percutaneous umbilical cord blood sampling is indicated. If critical anemia develops, you can see the trend in the MCA PSV increasing beyond the normal range. If it gets more than 1.5 multiples of the median, that's an indication for treatment of the baby considered critical anemia. One of the reasons why screening for fetal anemia is so important is that we do have a therapy that can be administered during pregnancy that's very effective. Babies that are identified as being critically anemic can be given an intrauterine transfusion. The optimal approach is to identify the placental location and specifically the umbilical cord insertion site. This is the place of the cord that's the most stable. You can use a free loop if necessary. 
but in those cases you need to paralyze the baby so you don't have movement during the procedure dislodging the needle. The needle is introduced under direct ultrasound guidance into the umbilical vein. The specimen is sent to confirm fetal hematocrit and the transfusion is initiated. The volume to be transfused is based on the starting hematocrit for the fetus as well as the estimated fetal weight. After two transfusions, you can expect that the fetal blood volume will be very nearly replaced with the O negative blood that's been transfused. Outcomes for babies that undergo um, intrauterine transfusion are excellent. So in summary, I'd like to talk through the screening profile for moms that are Rh negative in pregnancy. In order to identify which babies are at risk, first the mother's phenotype needs to be determined as Rh negative. Additionally, she needs to have an antibody screen which is positive with a cutoff of 1 to 8 or 1 to 16. Secondly, the paternal phenotype needs to be identified. Fathers that have Rh positive cells expressing that positive big D antigen on the surface carry a risk of passing this characteristic on to their children. The genotype may be one of two things. It can be homozygous, in which case there's a 100% chance that the infant will carry the same phenotype, or it can be heterozygous. In that case, there's a 50% incidence that the fetus will carry the same phenotype. If the father's genotype is heterozygous, then it's presumed and paternity is assured, then it's presumed that the infant also shares that antigen and enhanced surveillance with serial MCA Doppler testing can be initiated if the mother is at the critical titer. If the father's genotype is heterozygous, then confirmation of the fetal phenotype is indicated. This can be done one of two ways. It includes amniocentesis, which of course carries a risk for further sensitization, or non-invasive testing with circulating cell-free fetal DNA. In this test, the maternal plasma is tested for fragments of fetal DNA that wash into the maternal circulation. Whole cells do not mix uh, with the maternal uh, circulation, but we know that fragments of the cells do come across, and that includes pieces of the fetal DNA. So in 2011, they developed the medium that allows us to suspend those fragments of DNA long enough to do testing. So this has been uh, a huge step forward for the treatment of Rh disease and also means that we can non-invasively test the fetal phenotype even if the father is not available for testing. So in women that are Rh negative with an Rh positive infant who reached the critical titer on the antibody screen indicating some type of immune response, they can be given enhanced surveillance with MCA peak systolic velocity measurements. If they're sensitized, Rogam will not help to prevent um, anemia developing in the baby. So in summary, which babies are at risk? The first step is identifying the mother's phenotype. If she's Rh negative, the second test is to do an antibody screen. If her antibody screen is negative, there should be no to minimal risk of fetal anemia and Rogam is indicated at the standard time of 28 weeks and postpartum or if any of the risk factors develop during pregnancy. If the antibody screen is positive, serial titer should be followed monthly during pregnancy. The critical titer is 1 to 8 to initiate MCA PSV surveillance for anemia. Additionally, the risk to the fetus can be pinpointed based on additional testing. The first of that depends on the father's phenotype. If he's Rh negative and paternity is certain, then there should be no risk to the fetus. If his phenotype is positive, however, there are one of two possible genotypes. If he's homozygous, the risk will be 100% if the fetus carries the same antigen and is at risk. If he's heterozygous, however, there's only a 50% risk that the fetus carries the same antigen. Therefore, further investigation should be done to identify the fetal phenotype. This can be done one of two ways. The first is with amniocentesis, which carries with it the risk of inducing further sensitization in the pregnancy, 
And the sec second way is non-invasive testing by measuring circulating cell-free fetal DNA. This is a new technology which was developed in 2011 that allows for small fragments of fetal DNA which cross into the maternal circulation to be suspended in plasma long enough that they can be evaluated. We know that whole fetal cells do not often cross into the maternal circulation, but the developers of this test have identified that very small fragments of DNA do pass and they can preserve it long enough to type the infant non-invasively. This has been a huge advance for us, particularly in cases where the father's not available for testing or paternity is not certain. If the fetal phenotype is positive, then the baby is at risk and enhanced surveillance needs to be pursued with peak serial peak systolic velocity, MCA measurements, and fetal transfusion if indicated. If the fetal phenotype is negative, then no further testing is indicated.